Good afternoon, everyone. And as we say in Spanish, buenas tardes. All right. <laughs> thank you, Debbie, for that wonderful introduction. And thanks to all of you, the mayors and city council members who are here, who've uh, come here today to share strategies on economic growth. And believe me, I know that these are some really hard and pressing times for a lot of us, and especially for you. Uh, I know it's not easy, uh, but even in the hardest of times, you all continue to step up to the plate. And I know it's because you care deeply about the people that you represent and about uh, playing a critical role in our larger national economic recovery. Uh, you know, I've never been a mayor or a city council member, but I have been a member of Congress and a state senator, an assemblywoman, and my first real job was serving on a school board, a community college board. And believe me, when you've got a seven-member board, community comes to you. And you pretty well darn know what's going on. <laughs> so I can relate to the fact that you as elected officials work very closely with your communities and you're on call all the time. And that is so important. So I want to salute you and I'd like to ask you to give yourselves a round of applause because you have just a tough job as well, if not tougher. I know your jobs are the most intimate and the most immediate form of government. And I know that uh, you're forced to make real tough decisions that directly affect the lives of the people that you may even know by name personally. And President Obama and I know the most important thing we can do to support you is to promote policies that will help stimulate economic job growth. A huge part of that is making sure that we have skilled, competent workforce that can compete. So let me thank the many of you for your leadership and for your participation on our local workforce boards. I know that this organization meets monthly with my employment training administration to help us understand your local workforce needs. Your legislative counsel, Neil Bomberg, has been an invaluable partner. Give him a round of applause. He's a really good guy. And I know he works really hard on your behalf. And to those of you who lead workforce boards, you do have a very important job in my book. I know you spent a great deal of time recruiting right, the right business leaders to serve on your boards, and you built bridges to connect them with community-based organizations and also faith-based groups that can serve our unemployed constituents. And we want to help you in that effort. So let me share some breaking news about what President Barack Obama just proposed to make your jobs, I hope, a little easier. A few minutes ago, I wrapped up a conference call with Jean Sperling and with Cecilia Munoz at the White House. We announced a new plan to help one million displaced workers find jobs. As you may know, we have two important programs to help workers get retrained and reemployed if they lose their job due to foreign trade. It's known as the Trade Adjustment Assistance Program and the WIA Dislocated Worker Program. But it shouldn't matter whether a layoff is a result of offshoring, downsizing, or a failed business venture. To those who lose a job through no fault of their own, they should have access to high quality help when it comes to changing careers or finding a job. And we believe it's time to turn our unemployment system into a re-employment system. So proposing a new universal displaced worker program to expand the availability of services for all job seekers is what we're proposing. The program would give every displaced worker access to employment services to help them find a job or to change their careers. This includes targeted assistance and skills assessments for all displaced workers and for those who need to upgrade their skills to compete in this new job economy, the President and I are proposing up to $4,000 per person in training awards. If necessary, workers can qualify for another $4,000 for a second year to finish skills training and development if they need to pursue a more technical field. 
We recognize that many unemployed workers are balancing at this time family responsibilities with job training and job search. And that's really what's happening now in, in our communities. Therefore, the new program would provide stipends that could help eligible workers care for their children or offset their transportation costs while they're trained. These are very important elements that I know many of you have talked to us about. We also recognize that sometimes workers have to relocate to find a job. The Universal Displaced Worker Program would provide some cash assistance to ease the burden that can come with moving from another city or another state. And for workers, older workers, over 50, who have spent their entire career in one sector, we know it can be really hard and difficult to find a new job in a new industry at previous wages. So our program would provide a modest wage subsidy to ease the transition of older workers who take a new job that may pay less. And finally, we want to upgrade and better connect our federally funded one-stop career centers across this country. Each year, 30 million people get help finding a job at these centers, but we believe that there are so many more, millions, that should be taking advantage of that. These centers provide job search assistance, information and training and reemployment services. Currently, names for these centers vary from state to state and from city to city. And it can be both confusing for businesses as well as people seeking employment. Even the electronic tools developed by various parts of the federal government to make job transition easier are spread across many disconnected websites. It shouldn't be this compli complicated to help people. Every person seeking job assistance and every business looking for skilled workers should be able to reach a one-stop career center either physically or online. That's why the president is proposing the creation of an integrated American Job Center Network. The network will unify all of our one-stop centers and their electronic resources. And the American Job Center Network would connect 3,000 physical locations across the country under one umbrella. Doesn't that make sense? I think so. It will enlist the help of our partners, including our government agencies, libraries, community colleges, community organizations, and others to expand our reach. The new website will be www.jobcenter.usa.gov. The site will provide a new single point of access for both job seekers and businesses looking to hire. We'll be calling on our workforce boards and our community organizations to get the word out about the many employment services that are a mouse click or a short drive away. The proposal will be outlined in detail in the President's budget. And if you think these reforms make sense, I want to personally encourage you to make your opinion and your thoughts known to your elected representatives while you're here in town. Those are your senators and congresspeople. The Displaced Worker Program would complement the President's plan to invest $8 billion to fund new partnerships between community colleges and businesses. The idea here is very simple, folks. We want to match what students are learning in school with what businesses are looking for. Here, our goal is to develop programs with a focus on training for high growth industries like IT, healthcare, advanced manufacturing, and renewable energy. And you know, as mayors and city council members, that we should care about expanding our partnerships. And one very important, important component to that is the community colleges. And I'll tell you why. It's a great recruitment and retention tool to attract and keep businesses in your cities and your towns. And a great way to create new tax revenue streams for your cities and your towns. People want to do business in places where pools of skilled workers live. It's also a great way to get local businesses talking to your community colleges about their workforce needs. We're already helping many employers match what's taught in the classroom with their needs in an office or on the factory floor. And we're currently accepting applications for $500 million in grant competition under the TAA Community College and Career Training Program. I urge you strongly to partner with your local community colleges, businesses, and workforce boards to apply for this funding. 
And next, I want to tell you about another grant competition that we opened up last week. It's called CSEP, the Senior Community Service Employment Program. This program is for lower income seniors age 55 and older. We're awarding up to 20 local grants to help more than 35,000 seniors receive work-based training by doing community service. We're offering subsidies to put older Americans to work in daycare facilities, senior centers, schools, and hospitals. And that's not the end of the list. With this experience, many of these folks can transition into good paying jobs that also can help improve your community. The grant solicitation is posted in the March 9th Federal Register, and I encourage you to explore this opportunity. These are a few of the resources and initiatives that we believe at the Department of Labor that can help you grow your local economies and put folks back to work. But I also wanted to make an ask or a request of you while I'm here. Last year, many mayors, including some of you in the room, played a tremendous role in our initiative to create summer youth employment opportunities. You created summer jobs at the local level, and you reached out to your local businesses and asked them also to participate. And I want to ask you to do it again. Really, it was mayors who invented the summer jobs program. And for many years, we had summer jobs program under the J JPTA, the Job Training Partnership Program. But that money dried up in 2000, and it was leaders like you who kept that initiative alive. Then, two years later, President Obama saw fit to provide funding so that we could, as a society, put some of these summer youth to work. More than 367,000 young people found summer work opportunities in 2009 and 2010 because of the Recovery Act funding. When those dollars dried up last year, I made summer youth jobs a top priority at the Department of Labor. I personally traveled to communities around the country and made my case to people, to businesses and to mayors, and asked people to join in. And as a result, a number of major corporations like Jamba Juice, UPS, and Wells Fargo signed up. Major nonprofits like We Are Golf helped tee up thousands of summer jobs for young people. And local leaders like you worked with their local business and communities to secure commitments. Together, we provided about 80,000 summer job opportunities for youth last year. But now, I have a bigger cheerleader behind me. I've got the President of the United States. And he says he wants to make this a priority. So I'm asking you to join us in this effort. And we're calling this whole program the Summer Jobs Plus. The administration has already helped secure commitments of more than 180,000 summer work opportunities. But we need to do more, and we need your help. That includes paid positions, internships, mentoring relationships, job shadowing programs, and others. And later this month, we'll be launching a Summer Jobs Plus job bank at dol.gov slash summerjobs. This is an online search tool that will allow young people to see who's hiring locally. And we hope you'll post your summer jobs onto the national directory and encourage businesses in your cities to do the same. The job bank will allow you to see the corporations that have made commitments in other cities. And hopefully, it will also present new ideas for you to go after some of those corporations in your own towns and communities. This is a great program, and I know that we can do better. But it's also a great way to give credit to local leaders like you, city council people and mayors, who have known about some good programs out there already that you have helped to run and administer. But now, without federal support, we need your help. So we're continuing to try to find federal dollars meanwhile, but we're not going to wait. We're going to knock on doors, and we're going to ask you to help us. And I hope that you will work with us and with my assistant secretary, Jane Oates, and her staff at the Employment and Training Administration to see how you can get involved. I want to close today by giving you an update on the status of the reauthorization of the Workforce Investment Act. This would obviously be the best way to integrate many of the programs that I've just mentioned to you today. But we all know that it's hard work, because right now we have a Congress at gridlock. And the President and I have grave concerns about proposals on Capitol Hill that would repeal programs serving the very people that you and I care about. Veterans, disabled workers, farm workers, at-risk youth, and of course, 
even the elderly. And this is the wrong way to go, in my opinion. We can't wait for WIA reauthorization to invest in our American workers. That's why the President's budget contains proposals to strengthen the public workforce system to speed our recovery. The budget is very clear in terms of its commitment to job training programs, and I can't tell you how proud that makes me feel. Some folks in Washington look at the public workforce system as just another budget item. But some forget just how important that system is and how real it is for millions and millions of people. We need to ensure that this workforce system remains flexible and responding to the local needs of our businesses, our entrepreneurs, but most of all, to the communities and the constituents that you all represent. We need to make sure that job training is there for everyone, and especially for the vulnerable communities that I mentioned earlier. We have a lot of work to do, and we can't forget about these folks. We need to strengthen our partnerships with adult literacy and with TANF programs so that every adult with low literacy gets assistance that provides vocational training while they learn to read and write. We need to invest in programs that serve at-risk and disconnected youth. And we need to do more to help our returning veterans, finding good-paying civilian jobs right here because much of what they learned abroad while they were serving our country can be applicable to jobs here at home. We just got to facilitate it. And that's why we're working with everyone to see that we try to get these programs all working in the same direction to help strengthen the public workforce system. So with that, I want to conclude my remarks. I hope I was able to convey some useful information today. And let me tell you, it's an exciting time, exciting time to be here with you and to know that you have a strong commitment to get our economy back to work for everyone. And I can't do it alone. I stand on your shoulders and the shoulders of many millions of people who want to find a job. People out there who are working, who may have lost their job through no fault of their own, but they need our help, and I need your help. So when you go walk the halls of Congress, I hope that you will impart good, clear information to the, to the folks up there, that they realize how important the workforce investment boards are, the leadership that mayors and city council members play, and of course, our entrepreneurs. It's a package. It's a package, and we have to present it in that manner. So I want to thank you for inviting me. I hope you have a successful conference and look forward to seeing you very soon. Thank you, and God bless you.